current trend, and I'm talking to you in June of 2017, so if you're watching this somewhere down the line, the current trend may have really changed. But the current trend is to show square images on social media just a little bit better than, um, than the longer or more uh, landscaped images. So here's how I put together a quick little image post with kind of a, a current modern look. Um, I want to use this image of the horse and I picked out a quote about looking back. So I'm going to um, crop this image to square. I'm in Lightroom. I'm using the most current version, Lightroom 2015. And um, I, I want to make a virtual copy of my image first. That way I have my edit and my settings for this particular crop of the image, which is full crop from what it was in the camera. So I just right clicked on, I can right click on this image. I can right click on the thumbnail. It really doesn't matter. And then I'm going to do create virtual copy. You can also do it through a menu up here. All right, once my virtual copy is created, I've already made the color corrections to this image. I've already applied the preset that I wanted to use. I'm really fairly happy with it. Um, and I know that a lot of the stuff that I don't like about it are gonna get cropped off in this particular instance. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop my image. So I'm gonna go to develop. I'm gonna go to my crop tool. I'm going to choose one to one over here in my proportions and I'm gonna make sure that my lock is locked in case I wanna move it. Now for me, this is already kinda of where I want it. I just wanna move my horse over just a hair bit. Not a whole lot, not a whole lot, just a little. I'm gonna go ahead and click on done. And now this is the image that I wanna move over to Photoshop to actually add the text and stuff to. I can't do that in Lightroom, so I'm gonna right click on the image again. Again, image, thumbnail, or you can use the menu up at the top. And I'm gonna say edit in Photoshop 2017. That's gonna open a copy of the image. Now, in the end, in my Lightroom catalog, when all said is said and done today, I will have three copies of this same image. I'll have the original image that is the original landscape, um, photo right out of my camera. I will have the square cop bead or square cropped virtual virtual copy. And then I will also have a layered TIFF file that I'm going to create from the image today. All right, so I cheat. I rob things from previous images. I'm going to admit it right here. I don't do things from scratch every time. It would absolutely kill me in time if I did so. So realistically, I'm gonna leave it up to you if you wanna know how to do this. I've got tutorials coming out um, on how to put together an image like this one, but I'm gonna take um, all the copy and all the information from this image and just drag it over to this one <laughs> so that I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Basically, all this is is I took, um, I found my center point, I took and drew a circle. It is a separate layer, so if you look over here um, where my mouse is bouncing up and down, you'll be able to see we have the background image, we have a layer that is opacity has been set to 40%, that's the white layer. Then we have a couple of layers of type. Then this logo was created in Photoshop, so there's a couple of different elements to it that are here. If I were really super organized, I would have those things all in groups. There's great things that you can do in Photoshop. Doesn't mean you have to. And I think that's probably one of my biggest pieces of wisdom about Photoshop is just because you can doesn't mean you have to. So I want everything but the background photo because I want to keep all of this and I'm just going to change the quote out. So I'm going to select the layer one here, which is the white um, circle. And I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to click on the very top layer, which is this hashtag be more biz for my um, hashtag for putting this stuff out on Facebook and on Instagram. So once I've done that, now if I have the move tool selected, which is just the V key, um, that's a great shortcut. It will save you a tremendous amount of time. I can go ahead and 
click, hold, and drag that all of that text and stuff over to this other image. Now, it comes in a little bit different because this image is a little bit larger in pixel size than, than the previous one. This one was a full frame crop. The other one probably was a little bit tighter. I have two choices at this point. I can go ahead and make my circle and my text match um, the size of the image, the background, or I can resize the background down to um, match the circle. So my only consideration here, here's what I have to keep in mind, is that there are some graphical elements in this particular set of information. So this circle in my Be More Business and the little triangle are um, not vector art, which means that if they go larger, they're get, gonna get a little bit pixely. Now, in this particular case, it's going on Instagram, it's going on Facebook, I'm not gonna agonize about that. I'm gonna actually enlarge this because every other element is a Photoshop native element. The circle, the type, all of these things are things that I've done in Photoshop, and if I resize them, it's not gonna matter. It's gonna increase the resolution to match the image that I have. So all of those things are still selected, all my layers over here selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Edit, um, and I'm gonna choose Transform, and I'm gonna choose Scale. And that's gonna give me my little handlebars here to be able to do it. Now I'm gonna hold down my Shift key while I'm working. And the reason why I wanna do that is it's gonna keep everything proportional. And I like to grab in a corner, you can grab it anywhere you want, but I'm just gonna grab it and I'm gonna make that circle big like it needs to be for this particular image. I'm gonna go just a hair bit larger. Now I'm not gonna care that it's off over here because now I'm gonna let go of the shift key. I'm gonna click and hold somewhere in on the image. Now be mindful of the fact if you have the feature in Photoshop turned on that you have to have the selection on, so where you have to click on part of the layer that you're moving. Be mindful that you need to be clicking on something. If you click off in outer space, then it doesn't move what you want it to move. However, in my case, I have that, I don't have that turned on. So anywhere inside of these that I click is good. So I'm just gonna click and hold and position this where it needs to be. Again, you can get super exact. You can measure all of the, the margins and those kind of things. Not my style. <laughs> I eyeball it and I get pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the check mark to say, okay, I, I like the, the size of what I'm doing. All right, I already have my um, text copied to my clipboard. So I'm just gonna highlight the text for the quote and I'm gonna paste over it the text that I have um, chosen for this particular quote. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add some returns because this was not, um, it wasn't text that, when it was made originally, it wasn't text that was done within a box. It was just typed onto the screen. So I have to do a little bit of editing to make it work the way I want. So there we go. All right, that being said, this is not, it needs to be bigger in this particular case. So now that it's selected again, I can make the font size larger or I can do what I consider cheating. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that's good. And I'm gonna go back, transform scale, transform scale. And then I'm just gonna resize that again. So I'm gonna just come over here and resize it. Now in, in positioning where I want my text to be, I want to make sure that my horse's eye is not obstructed by text. It's really important that the horse be able to look through the text for a visual reference. So if, no matter what I do, I want to leave at least the pupil of the horse's eye where I can see it, but I also want the text to look good in there. Now the text is huge, and there's a reason why the text is huge. We're putting this on, my, my main goal is to get this on Instagram. It's gonna be shared to Facebook from Instagram. That's all cool and good. I'm happy to get it on Facebook. My recognition on Facebook is not as good as it is on Instagram. So I want my image to look awesome on Instagram. And since most people look at Instagram on their phone, bigger text is really important because by the time, and I'll zoom out just to show you, by the time you get this reduced down, that's what you see. You, The bigger text is now able to be read. So that's about the size people will be looking at 
the image um, when they see it in in the finished state. So I want them to really notice the quote. They're going to get my hashtag and who I am from the information that's up here across the top. That's if it's on Facebook and I want people to be able to see that. I want them to know what the hashtag is. But it, right now, I really just want to build my following. So I want things that are easy for people to interact with. Now, once I have it down to this size, that white circle is a little bit obnoxious for this image. It looked good on the other one, but I'm going to drop the opacity down just a little bit more. Not a lot, because if I drop it down too much, I won't be able to see my letters as effectively. But I think that maybe looks just a little bit better. Um, so I went from 40 to 27. Might go back just a hair bit. Okay, let's go to 30. So to do that, I just select the layer and then there's an opacity setting. If you'll see my mouse over here, there's an opacity setting um, over here that you can do that, that affects just that particular layer. All right, now I have my image um, where I want it. I need to change my um, author here. And because I have, um, I need to change C-O-E-L-H-O. Need to make sure I know how to spell his name. And it's Paul, right? Paulo. Okay. I love this author, by the way. Oh goodness. There's a there's a downside to getting old. C O E L H O. Your short term memory goes. Whoops. All right. I know. <laughs> and it's okay, by the way, to cuss a little bit at um, Photoshop sometimes it is just not as cooperative as you would like for it to be. All right. Oh, I must have changed that. Yep. So I changed my layer into um, a rasterized type. Somehow I must have hit a shortcut. It happens all the time. Not a big deal. I just need to go back in my history to where it's actually a type layer. And now I can edit it. Okay, there we go. So now I have my attribution correct. And actually, the other one I had to squeeze this in, but I can probably loosen my letting here to, um, to loosen that up just a tidbit so that my, um, my type isn't so crammed together. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that. Oh, let's go with 36. No, yep. Oh, that made it um, smaller. Need to add a return in there. Okay, that's a little bit better. Let's go ahead and add just a little bit more. 48, there we go. So that helps fill the space top to bottom so it looks a little bit more consistent. All right, so now my image is, is done. It's ready to go. Please remember, if you are a professional photographer, put the name of your photography business on the image, even if you're using it for something else. If you are a business owner and you're making these images for, um, for publication on your Facebook or your Instagram, anywhere on social media, always put the uh, .com for your business or at least something people can do like a hashtag where they can come back in and find you. It's really critical because your images do get detached from what you're doing. So at the very least, they can find me at KimberlyBeer.com or at hashtag be more biz. So um, websites, by the way, are a little bit more consistent to be able to find than other things. All right, when I save this, so when I do Apple S and I actually save this file, I don't wanna rename it. I want it to go back into Lightroom. So when I save it, it's actually going to put this image in the in the stack in Lightroom. So it's already done it, so I'm gonna pop back over to Lightroom. So now my image is in the same grouping. So this does a multitude of things for me. First of all, it, it gives me that image where I can edit it right from Lightroom. And again, all I have to do is right click on it and I can say I want to edit it in Adobe Photoshop, and then it'll ask me, do, do I wanna edit an original, or do I wanna edit with Lightroom adjustments, or do I wanna edit a copy? And I always wanna edit my original, because then I can go back and I can make changes to that original file. So in my workflow, I always make sure that when I send something over to Photoshop, I have the image as done as I, can possibly get it in Lightroom. And then that way the layered file, which is the TIFF file, so all the layers for the type and everything are gonna be there, um, I'll be able to go and get that um, and work on it straight from Lightroom. 
And if I do have to make changes, these two uh, with Lightroom adjustments and edit a copy, um, the edit with a Lightroom adjustments is gonna flatten the file. So it would make it so that that type was not editable. So I don't always wanna do that. So I'm gonna cancel that, but that just gives you an idea. Now, at this point, I have worked at this image at its, it is its optimal size or op, um, its uh, largest resolution. I haven't changed the pixel dimensions or anything of the regular image. I have cropped it, but I haven't removed any pixels. So this is actually a very big image. It, it doesn't look like it on the screen, but it actually is very large. So that's not gonna work for Photoshop. I mean, sorry, for for Instagram. I don't want to take a huge image. I don't want to store that much information on my phone because I'm going to have to send it over to my phone to post it. So I don't want to have that much data. I don't need it. So I'm going to export it. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to export. Again, there's three ways to do this. You can do it on the main image. You can do it on the thumbnail. You can do it up there from the top menu if you want to. And I'm going to click on export. Um, I'm gonna let it go on my desktop. There's a couple of things here that are probably more important than others. The export location, so you need to know that, otherwise you're not gonna know where you're gonna find your file. And you need to know the file settings. So I have the files limited to 800K right at the moment and out as a JPEG. So um, I can remove that file limit. In this case, it's not necessary. I'm gonna bump my JPEG up just a little bit. Photo or um, Facebook and Instagram and those type of things are going to optimize your images for you. So this you you can output a little bit more quality image and let their um, their optimizations take effect. So they're going to drop it down anyway, just to make it so that it shows up really easily over the internet. I want my long edge to be 1200 pixels. In this case, we've got a square image, so everything is gonna be 1200 pixels. Typically, that's what um, Facebook is calling for these days. So I wanna start with that as my baseline. The Instagram images don't have to be as big. I had been exporting images to put on my Facebook page, um, but I don't want the watermark on this image. I already have my um, website down here so I don't necessarily want the watermark here and I don't need to do anything for post-processing the rest of these things metadata um, sharpening I do like to keep all except the camera and the camera raw information with the file as far as far as the metadata is concerned but I don't need keywords or anything like that all right so I'm gonna go ahead and click on export now that file is gonna appear on my desktop and um, I can use a multitude of ways. I can email it to myself. I could go ahead and put it on Facebook and download it to my phone from Facebook. Um, or I can use a file transfer um, type of a situation to get it over to my phone and then go ahead and post it onto Instagram. But this is the creative process for creating one of those posts. Now that I've done all of this, if you do have access to the full creative suite for um, for Adobe, there is a product out called Spark Post, and it's available on the App Store, and I know it's available for iOS, which is iPhones. I don't know about Androids because I don't have an Android phone, but I would imagine that there's something similar for that. And you can do this in just a few keystrokes on, or few, few finger strokes, I guess, on your phone in a multitude of ways. There's an upside to that because it's really immediate and really exact, um, and it's they, you can make some beautiful things that you would have never even thought of. And um, there's a downside to it in that you don't get the consistent branding unless it's already in there and you can make your branding fit. So there's there's a positive and a negative to everything you single you do within within marketing and photography. So it's all a trade off as to which works better for you, whether it works better to do it this way where you're utilizing Lightroom and Photoshop or whether it's easier to just get the the raw image um, or edited and image over to your phone and then be able to use something like spark post to be able to create something and I'll try to get some spark post tutorials later um, on but that's how you use Photoshop and Lightroom together to make a social post pretty simple thanks